As is reported everywhere in the news, right now, Los Angeles is on fire. At the time of recording, 180,000 people have been displaced, 12,000 buildings have been damaged or destroyed, including the homes of many celebrities, two dozen people have lost their lives, and it is expected to be the most expensive fire in the history of Los Angeles, and quite possibly the history of the world, costing well over $100 billion. Now, you might expect me, as a climate communicator who has spent the best part of a decade talking about this stuff to say this fire is the sign of things to come. This is climate change and the rich are finally feeling the burn. But no, I, I think there's something much worse on display here and we need to talk about it. But first of all, let's talk about the fire. California is no stranger to wildfires. They literally have thousands of them every year. The question is, why is this one so much worse? Well, depending on where you get your news from and who you follow on social media, you've probably heard one of two narratives over and over again. This fire is a result of climate change, or this fire is a result of incompetence by politicians cutting fire department budgets and hiring the wrong people. Let me tell you two true statements. Firstly, that globally, the total area burned by wildfires every year has decreased over the past couple of decades. And secondly, that the total area burned by wildfires in California specifically has increased over the past couple of decades. This paper from 2017 used satellite data to find that global burn area from wildfires had decreased over the previous 18 years. And this graph shows you the acres burned by wildfires in California since 1987. Anyone can download this. This is from the California Department for Forestry and Fire Protection. It certainly looks like the line goes up. So I did some very basic statistical analysis and found that the Spearman correlation coefficient between years and acres burned was 0.36, which is significant at the 5% level. Or in other words, we can be pretty confident that the acres burned per year has increased over time. So globally, wildfires are decreasing. In California specifically, however, they are on the up. Surely then that means that there isn't some global factor like climate change at play here, but instead something local, like changing forestry techniques or cutting the budget of fire departments. Well, if you only had those two pieces of information to draw on, then that would be a reasonable conclusion to draw. But there is much more going on here. Firstly, this paper found a decrease in global burn area because of an increase in agriculture, people expanding farms into areas that would normally experience wildfires, particularly savannas, with the farms being less flammable than the land they replace. It also cites a previous study that found climate strongly influences global wildfire activity and the length of wildfire seasons has increased significantly due to climate change. In California, however, we don't see that change in agriculture and instead see a much clearer climate-based signal. A 2021 paper found that two-thirds of the recent trend in wildfire activity in the western United States could be explained by anthropogenic climate change, the remainder being natural variability, something that was backed up by a 2023 paper about California specifically. So bringing this back to the LA fire, climate change is what caused it and made it so big. Right? Well, not necessarily. This fire is so much bigger and more destructive for a few reasons. Firstly, after a long dry spell, California saw a lot of rain in 2023, which boosted plant growth. Then 2024 saw much less rain, drying out the then extensive vegetation, leaving lots of fuel for wildfires at the end of the year. And secondly, the Santa Ana winds, which occur when cold mountain air rolls down a hill under gravity, drying out as it does so, occur every year, but do not normally blow as fast as they have over the past week or so. These abnormally strong winds have helped spread the fire and prevented helicopter drops of water, which would normally be used by firefighters to contain it. The drought conditions were very likely intensified by climate change. I am not aware of any rapid attribution studies that have been done that could say that more definitively, but there is no known clear link between the strength of the Santa Ana winds and climate change. We can absolutely say that climate change made the conditions that allowed this fire to spread so widely, especially around water availability, much more likely. But we cannot say that the fire was exclusively caused and intensified by climate change. In fact, there are many human factors at play. People have increasingly built in areas vulnerable to wildfires 
and have built homes that are themselves highly flammable, as well as electrical infrastructure that can help wildfires to spread. Additionally, at the time of the fire, while water reservoirs were above average for this time of year in Southern California, one large reservoir was closed for maintenance. Some 200 fire hydrants were reported to run dry, which is partly explainable by sheer demand causing water pressure to drop, but there also seem to be some unexplained failures that are being investigated. And lastly, the LA Fire Department's budget was cut by $23 million in May last year. And then in November, a new contract was signed, making an extra $111 million available to the department. So actually, their budget has grown. The reality of this fire is a mix of all these statements. It is unhelpfully reductive to say this fire was caused by climate change or this fire was caused by politicians. Multiple things can be true at once. There are local human factors, and there are global anthropogenic climate factors to explain why this fire got so big. But I'm absolutely not trying to both sides this. Those saying that climate change caused the LA fire are focusing on a key exacerbating component, while those, let's face it, on the political right, especially once and future President Trump and those in his orbit attempting to carry favour, are completely ignoring that key exacerbating factor and instead focusing on what will almost certainly turn out to be very minor contributing factors that are more local. And additionally, spread misinformation, such as around diversity hires or the fire department budget, that in my opinion are far more damaging and far less representative of the complex reality. But here's the thing, the reason that their messaging is so effective is because it can focus on just one of these points. Globally, wildfires are down, so there must be something about Democrats California. There's no link between the Santa Ana winds and climate change. Did you know that a major water reservoir was closed for maintenance? Each one of these points, in itself correct, can be a tweet or a soundbite or a quote in a newspaper that is posted and then shared again and again and again without the surrounding context. And as the century goes on, we will increasingly see events intensified by climate change, partially caused by climate change. But it'll be very rare for an event to be explicitly, undoubtedly caused by climate change. There will almost always be some local factor that can be focused on and shared by those people opposed to climate action. And the way that we currently share information online vastly favours simplicity. The communication of a complex, nuanced argument is much more difficult than the communication of a simple one, especially an emotive argument, in such a way that massively favours those people opposed to climate action. The LA fires are not a sign of things to come. We're not going to see cities all around the world go up in flames in this way. It's quite specific to Southern California. And frankly, many natural disasters took place last year that were intensified by climate change that displaced and killed more people than the LA fires. In that sense, they're nothing new. But the fire is a sign of things to come in how we will talk about climate disasters to come, and how the way that we currently share information is uniquely ill-equipped to accurately represent the role of a changed climate in those events. While they should be a wake-up call and clear evidence of the problem at hand and the necessity for change, the design of social media networks in particular favouring simple narratives and making the communication of the complex truth more difficult will prevent that from being the dominant narrative. The current digital fractionation of the truth will only delay the transition to a livable future. Something that could be moderated by the design of social media networks via fact-checking, but um... Yeah, that's not happening anymore, is it? And this isn't just applicable to the causes of a climate-intensified event, it also applies to its impacts. Let's talk about the rich. What's been notable about the coverage of the LA fire has been the emphasis on rich celebrities, including Anthony Hopkins, John Goodman, Jeff Bridges, Billy Crystal and Paris Hilton, among many others, losing their homes. And that's partly because they're famous and people like hearing about famous people. And it's partly because there's widespread malcontent around the wealthy and a sense of schadenfreude of people who are used to having everything losing for once. 
I have seen several people frame these fires as a form of justice. Either radical left Democrats finally feeling the consequences of their poor decisions, or those rich people who have contributed the most to the climate crisis finally feeling the burn. And yeah, these fires are unusual in that they have done material damage to a great many rich, famous people. But they have also done exactly the same to tens of thousands of ordinary people, including a great many low-income families. And they will not have the resources to rebuild their lives as celebrities do, especially if their insurance companies are unable to pay pay out because of the sheer scale of damage in this fire. JP Morgan estimates that total insured losses in this fire could be over $20 billion. The celebrities who have lost mansions in Malibu can afford to relocate or rebuild. They can afford it if their insurance doesn't pay out. And they can afford the increase in insurance premiums that will come after the last embers have burned out. The same cannot be said for the vast majority of people affected by these fires. Private insurers have been leaving this part of California in droves because of the increased risk of wildfires due to climate change, leaving many people to rely on the far more limited state-offered fire insurance program. And as I mentioned in a previous video, this is happening elsewhere, like in Florida. It is entirely possible that insurance companies wholesale pull out of the areas most at risk due to to climate change through wildfires, hurricanes, storm surges, flooding, and that will render properties in large areas just unsellable, because not even Aquaman will buy a house that is so at risk that nobody is willing to provide insurance for it. And that could be the start of the big climate financial crisis. The US Senate Budget Committee published a report on this possibility just last month, finding that more extreme weather events will, quote, cascade into plunging property values in communities where insurance becomes impossible to find or prohibitively expensive. A collapse in property values with the potential to trigger a full-scale financial crisis similar to what occurred in 2008. Climate change is no longer just an environmental problem, it is a looming economic threat. And as in 2008, the people most affected by this collapse will be the poorest in society, not the rich celebrities we've been hearing about this week who can afford to ride it out. Don't get me wrong, rich people have been affected by the LA fires more than probably any climate intensified disaster in US history. And in that sense, the rich, at least of California, are no longer safe. But that should not be the big takeaway. We should be talking mostly about the looming insurance crisis caused by climate change, most obviously in California, but more broadly. But again, the design of the internet favoring simplistic tweet-sized arguments means that the complex narrative necessary to tell that story and to warn people about this crisis gets lost in the, the noise of individual components of this fire and of climate change more broadly. Though, while we were editing this video, Legal Eagle released a video on the insurance crisis in California in relation to this fire. Watch that for more details. Thank you, Devin, for talking about this. And I wish that I could round out this video by pointing to specific recommendations, to specific policies and reforms that social media companies could make to allow for the better communication of complex ideas and to suppress overly simplistic arguments. But I don't know what those policies and, and those reforms would look like. Though I can say I'm pretty sure this isn't going to help. What I can say is that my major takeaway from the LA fires is that the way we currently share information, especially online and especially on social media networks, favors simplistic narratives in such a way that massively advantages those trying to obscure the role of climate change and obstruct climate action and disadvantages those trying to share the data-driven big picture. These fires are a microcosm of the climate crisis. Those impacted receiving the most attention are the wealthiest, the most able to ride it out, while the vast majority who are being impacted now and will continue to be impacted most in the future are sidelined. The causes are complex but clear and still misrepresented for political gain. And a crisis looms that, while scientists and analysts are trying to talk about it, the deck is stacked against them by how the social internet currently functions. 
Remember this graph? I downloaded this data and did the statistical analysis myself because I'd heard competing claims online about whether the total acres burned in California had increased over time or not. And while this data is available to literally anyone to download, not everyone has the ability to do this analysis, to find a statistical relationship and check the significance of that relationship. Having a statistical toolkit allows you to independently fact-check claims you see online and can be extremely useful in your job. And if you would like a free way to develop your statistical skills, then you should check out this video sponsor. Brilliant. Brilliant is an educational website and app offering interactive courses in data analysis and statistics written by award-winning teachers and researchers. Learn to explore data visually by delving through real data sets from sources like Spotify, Airbnb, and Starbucks. I've worked with Brilliant for years now because I love their approach to education. Instead of providing you with just a dry list of ideas and equations to learn, they introduce an idea and then get you to implement it yourself. There's a reason that they have these interactive exercises in their courses. It's because it's the best way to learn. It creates an environment where you try stuff and if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter. You learn from your mistakes. It's actually not dissimilar to the tutorial system that I experienced at Oxford. And if you would rather to learn about topics in maths more broadly, or programming, or artificial intelligence, Brilliant has you covered with thousands of lessons across STEM subjects. To try all of this for free, head to brilliant.org slash simonclark or scan the QR code on screen. And if you like what you find there, you can also use that link to get a 20% discount on an annual subscription. That link again, brilliant.org slash simonclark for an effective way to learn new techniques in data analysis and science. If you live in the LA area, then obviously this situation is still ongoing as of the time of recording. I have friends and colleagues who live in the area. I very much hope that you can all stay safe and that you have a home to return to when this is all over. This video would not have been possible without the support of my patrons over on patreon.com forward slash Simon Oxfizz. Patrons get early access to videos, they get exclusive content every month, notably a behind the scenes vlog. And if you support the producer tier and higher, you get to vote on a video topic a month. Accurately representing the truth of my Patreon would require now almost a thousand individual stories. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna highlight three chosen at random. Thank you so much, Zach Subin, Daniel, and Harris Karimji for your support. If you enjoyed this video, please do the YouTube pleasantries. And if you'd like to watch something else from me, here's two I prepared earlier. And that just leads me to say thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.